G'day guys, so today we're going to have a look at a totally different type of trap. The automatic Pego dispenser. So the basic idea is to set out a bait box and anyone who attacks it gets ravaged by the Pegos, which then return home. So let's make one and see how it works. So find a flat area and put a thatch foundation down. Now you want to lower the foundation as far as you can, so start with a pillar in the centre of that foundation. Then snap one onto the edge at the lower snap point. I'll just get out of the sun. Demolish the first pillar and place another pillar in the centre again at the lowest snap point. Now that we've lowered it three times we can place the metal foundation down. So we're going to be working with a 2x4 foundation. This build while simple is a bit of a puzzle so you have to place everything down in the correct order. Now that the foundation's down, start with a thatch wall along the centre line. Quarter a ceiling over the top of it, so that's shifted half a square forward and half a square to the side. And extend two more thatch ceilings out. Now to wall in the ends and the corners of the foundation. leaving a two square gap in the centre of the sides. And finish with the door. Now you need ramps down from the three thatch ceilings. on both sides. Now for some more walls, cutting through them in ramps. Start with the door frame next to the other door frame. There's a few snap points, but this is the one we want. Then place walls down in the other three sides. And cover the ends with ceilings. Now walls up on the inside edge of those ceilings we just placed. Join together with the ceiling. And then hang walls down from the side. The purpose of that is to prevent people following the pegos in. Pegos can fit through there but people cannot. OK, so I'm going to need a ladder up. Place it next to the door. And now up from the edge of the thatch ceiling, place a door frame. And one more wall up. Three ceilings out from that. And build the rest of the wall down. Another ladder. Yeah. 
if it's green yet it's not going in, just change the angle of which you're trying to place it from which you're looking at. So now extend the ceiling to the edge of the other thatch so on the other side. And we're going to extend two walls down from that. Remember the RB button to cycle the snap points. Now go inside the bottom floor and before we demolish these that ceilings we need to place two walls in the centre. Dold up them two centre ramps. So they come down from the edge of the that ceiling. So now once they're in you can get rid of all the thatch. One more ladder above the top door to access the roof. Now just build a 1x1x2 one by one by in the centre. Use double stack doors for the door. Last thing to do is slap in all the doors. Okay, so this is what you should have ended up with. Okay, so now to load your trap with the tames that you'll need. Make things easy, I'll just put a temporary ramp up to the top. Don't need that last one, Packy's can jump. So the reason I'm using a Packy is because it's the smallest thing that you can ride, and they can fit through the double doors up the top. And now for the pegos. So you want to set the pegos to the lowest following distance. Pick it up so this is going on to the second floor. This is the standby platform where they go when the trap is ready to be triggered. So do it the same for every other Pego Mastix. Lowest following distance and set him to neutral. End up into the standby platform. So I've got four Pegos up there now, but I'm going to throw a couple monkeys up there as well. These are also small enough to fit through that gap, but they 
slow the people down if they get hit by their turds. So they can't run away from the Pegomastix. And if you're going to ask why don't I use two dons, it's because they're too big. Anything a two don can fit through, so can a person. So same thing, lowest following distance and on neutral. So I've loaded it with four Pegos and two monkeys. It's good to keep a mate boost. Now climb up the top and mount the packy. And whistle follow all. Now the Pegos and the monkeys are following the packy. And they should all be converged in the centre of that platform. There's room to the side of the front door for a feeding trough. Don't forget to feed them. Now only one thing left to do, and that's to put the bait boxes down. They do have to be fairly close, otherwise they won't rage on them when someone attacks the boxes. So place one each side. And make sure they're pin-coded so someone has to try and break them. And that's it, all set. Now there is three settings for the Pego Mastix. There's regular pickpocketing, fast pickpocketing and no pickpocketing. So this is regular pickpocketing. They won't attack straight away. Rather they'll just swarm around, stripping her of her inventory. But if she does attack, they'll turn aggressive and attack back. Killing her and taking everything. Now still on regular pickpocketing, if she chooses to run, the Pegos will chase her, but only for as long as they maintain aggro. If she's not attacking back, they will give up and return home with whatever they've stolen. So she got away here and there's a stream of them coming back. They come back from quite a long distance away. The Pegos are quite reliable at finding their way back in, even if they hit right on the end. They just bounce around until they find the gap. When the Pegos are set to no pickpocketing, they actually still pickpocket. It just means they attack straight away and pickpocket at the same time. As is shown here. I come to always leave you on regular or no pickpocketing. Fast pickpocketing has too many problems. What they do is strip one item off them, then run to the closest tribe member. So it doesn't work if they're following the packy. Although you can whistle it onto an alt account and then go asleep up in the top where the packy is. And they'll stay following that. Although even that sometimes bugs out. Heading over to the official servers now. I had a couple sitting inside on fast pickpocketing. And they're following an alt account asleep up the top. I just perched myself up on a cliff overlooking it. And then left it recording. So the fast pickpocketing worked for one of them. But the other one got hit. So now he's just fighting it out to the death. To provide a timestamp of if and when the trap has been triggered, you can place tripwire alarms down in the bottom holding pan. Just make sure they're set to enable trip by allies. And rename it if you wish. So 
So now when the Pegos return home, they'll tip that trip wire, telling you that it's gone off. So that's what I did in the official server trap, which is this one here. You can see all the pegos down in the holding pen down the bottom, so that means it's triggered. Alternatively, you can just spy glass the boxes and see if they're damaged. So that one either stole nothing or some berries to be to date. And he's got some meat and some flowers and flint. <laughs> Now the game's lagging. And that's the Pego that got the kill. Either one kill or two, I'm not sure. Always empty them so you know what they've taken each time. If they get too full, the victim item collection won't work anymore, and you won't get much. I got that shotgun earlier in the day, but I've got detonators and narcotics and a bit of ammo, stuff like that. Although, it's most often junk, of course. I'll just quickly show you the bug that happens when you use it on fast pickpocketing, when it's following a sleeping body. Sometimes they just bug out and they start just running away no matter what they're following. They just run straight into the distance and you never see them again. So even if you've called them onto yourself, they just keep running. And there he goes again. So I lost a couple of pegos to this before I realised what was happening. And then always left it on. Either regular pickpocketing or no pickpocketing. Anyway, that's it guys. Um, Go and have some fun.